and the methyl propanoid so basically like coo so the part which is attached with oxygen is a branch and the part which is connect with the carbon is called known as a main chain so first we name the branch and then we name the chain so if you want to name the branch so this one is a branch here this one is a branch this is a branch and this one is a branch so the name should be methyl propanoid so this one will be methyl because one carbon in a branch this cannot be methyl this can be methyl so either a can be answer or c can be answer then it is propanoid so prop means three carbon so 1 2 3 and here 1 2 3 4 so basically this is methyl propanoid but this one is methyl butanoid so the part which is attached with oxygen is considered as a branch so first we name the branch and then we name the chain that's why a is a right answer question number 9 and 28 A solution of ethanoic acid has a concentration two mole per dm cube. Which statement about this solution is correct? If we need concentration, what is the formula for concentration? When we are finding concentration, concentration is moles divided by volume. And how to get the moles? Because the masses are given, so moles equal mass in gram. so moles equal mass in gram divided by molecular mass or atomic mass or molar mass we can say so what is the mass in gram here it is 20 gram of ethanoic acid in 10 cm cube of water so basically we have to show which one like the concentration is answer is 2 mole per dm cube So first we'll get the moles of ethanoic acid. How to get the moles of ethanoic acid? Mass in gram divided by molar mass. What is the molar mass of ethanoic acid? Uh, two carbon, so that will be twelve multiplied by two plus hydro two oxygen, so sixteen multiplied by two plus four hydrogen, so one multiplied by four. So twenty-four plus thirty-two plus four. That's equal to sixty. Twenty-four plus thirty-two plus yeah. So that's equal to sixty. So, if we need the moles here for option A, what will be the number of the mole? It will be twenty divided by sixty. What are the number of the moles? Twenty divided by sixty. One by three. As the twenty divided by sixty is one by three. That is the number of the moles, but. and then divided by volume but the volume this is 0.33 and the volume is in cm cube it should be in dm cube divided by 1000 so the volume is divided by 1000 so 0.01 so if we need a concentration here it will be 0.33 Divide by zero point zero one. What's the answer for this? That's thirty three. Then we check the second statement. Thirty gram. So we get the moles. So thirty divided by sixty. That is equals to zero point five. And volume is twenty five cm cube. We'll divide by one thousand, so it will be point two five. If we need a concentration, point two point five divided by point two five. What's the answer? So point five that will be two mole per dm cube. So it shows that statement B is a right statement. Is it clear? We can check the other as well, but because we have to show that. the result like which solution is having a concentration 2 mole per dm cube is it clear question 
then question 25 and then 28 in question 25 A silver is less reactive metal than cadmium. Cadmium is less reactive metal than barium. So we have barium. Then we have cadmium. And silver. Which statement is correct? Barium does not react with, when heated with So barium does not react when heated with silver oxide. That's wrong because if barium is more reactive, it will displace the silver from its compound. So this statement is not, we want to find which is a correct statement. Cadmium displaces barium. So it cannot because cadmium is less reactive. So it cannot displace the more reactive. So this statement is wrong. Cadmium displaces silver ion, sorry, silver from the sil silver nitrate. That's true because the cadmium is more reactive. So cadmium can displace this silver from its salt, so this is correct. Cadmium react when heated with barium oxide, that's also wrong, because if barium is more reactive, how a cadmium can displace barium? That is why C is a correct statement. Question 28. Dry air is passed over a hot copper until all oxygen has reacted. The volume of the gas at the end of a reaction is 120 cm cube. What is the starting volume? So basically, this is a volume of unreacted air, the air which does not react. And what is the, when we compare the percentage of reacted air and unreacted air, the percentage of reacted air, because basically the percentage of reacted air is same as the percentage of oxygen. Because oxygen is an active component of air which will react to 21. And percentage of unreacted air. So remaining will be unreacted. That's equal to 789%. So seven, whenever you have a sample of air because oxygen is an active component, so the percentage of reacted air will be 21%. That's the same as the percentage of oxygen. And percentage of unreacted air will be 79%. So we can use this to calculate the volume of the starting air. How we can use this? If we know like the percentage of unreacted air. Is equals to volume of unreacted air. divided by volume of air, the total volume multiplied by 100. That's a formula which we will use to work out the original volume. So percentage of unreacted air, that we know it is 79%. Volume of unreacted air is 120. Volume of air, we don't know. So I'm writing it as X multiplied by 100. If I simplify for X, so X is equals to 120 multiplied by 100 divided by 79. What's the answer when you 120 multiplied by 100 divided by So it is approximately like 150, that's 151.898 is approximately equal to 152. So B is a right answer. Is it clear how to work out the starting volume from the volume of unreacted air or the air which is left? Any other question related to this exam? Question 29. 